Getco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. Hibera Minerals has been a remarkable growth story. The company started building in 2018. It now has a market cap of between 14 to 15 a billion. It is also an AX50 company. The CEO is Dale Henderson. Dale, welcome to Kitco. Yeah, hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. Uh, tell us about uh, the growth story. You're up to about 580,000 uh, per annum right now, I believe, in what you're processing. You plan to get to a million. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, um, it's been an incredible growth story, as you say. Uh, first construction 2018. Uh, we're now at a 580,000 ton run rate care of two plants, one of yeah, which yeah. we acquired with Altura. Um, from this point forward, uh, two more step ups in production. Um, the first of which has been constructed right now, so that'll take us to 680,000 tonnes. And we're looking to be commissioning that in the September quarter. And then the next step up from there takes us to a million tonnes per annum. Uh, that project's going for FID uh, this quarter and all going well within sort of 18 months, uh, that should be online. Uh, you, uh, we've had tremendous uh, lithium prices. Uh, when I last checked, uh, you have like about a cash balance right now in the Indian about about 2.2 billion right now. You do have a dividend right now. You are doing the processing, but growth plans right now, this must be a good, this must be a good problem. Yeah, it's a great problem. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a strong pricing environment, as you say, plus, uh, you know, we're, we're a big producer. We're, we're approximately 9% of the lithium supply uh, globally already. Uh, so strong volume, strong pricing has equaled a really strong balance sheet. And yeah, we're delighted to have de delivered our first dividend uh, last week. Um, interim dividend, there'll be um, uh, a top up at the end of the financial year. And uh, it's just a, a key maturity step for the business. Uh, we're growing up. Uh, chemical conversion, um, talking before, I was really surprised about uh, how little lithium is actually get shipped uh, that goes out, but uh, you're talking about further processing with, uh, with uh, in Australia. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we've, as, as a strategy for the business, we've always looked to involve ourselves downstream. Uh, we think it's a, a smart thing to do to create more value and extract more margin. Uh, for us, there's principally two pathways. Um, the first of which is to be a participant in hydroxide uh, manufacturing. Uh, so we've uh, commenced our first steps in that regard with our joint venture with POSCO. Uh, so it's a 43,000 tonne lithium hydroxide plant. Uh, that's been, uh, been constructed now. Uh, first uh, product will, will, will go to that plant um, probably December quarter this year, all going well for commissioning. So that's in hydroxide. Uh, the other piece of chemicals processing as an R&D project we call Midstream. And what we're looking at there is doing some of the chemical conversion at the mine site. And the idea here is take the product we produce today, which is 6% lithium oxide, do a couple of uh, chemical steps at the mine site, uh, which would achieve a few advantages. It upgrades the lithium from 6% to 35%, drops out the alumina silicate waste, which by mass is about sort of 90%. So a lot of what we ship to our customers, there's a big component that, that they don't need. And the last piece is that there's a step down in energy intensity, um, and that's care of some uh, electric processes we're deploying. So we think it's pretty neat. Uh, the product which would hit out the gate would be a lithium salt. Um, and we're looking at potentially lithium phosphate, maybe lithium sulfate, or maybe even a technical grade lithium carbonate. But um, very much R&D, um, but it looks good on paper and we'll see how we go. Does that take some of the value away from the people that are uh, downstream right now in terms of doing the process? E effectively, yes, it would. Yeah, um, yeah we would, yeah, Pilbara would sort of effectively take control of the lion's share of the, the chemical uh, processing. Yeah. Um, but there's still more processing to be done with that product. Um, that salt would, would then still go to our existing customer set. Um, and it would effectively skip the front, the front steps of their plant and be introduced in the back half of their processing plant where they would take it forward to either battery grade, battery grade carbonate or battery grade hydroxide. Uh, naysayers out here, uh, Dale, they look back and then they say that uh, we've seen price spikes before for uh, say uranium in the last decade where it spiked up, rare earth in the last decade that's gone up. So lithium, uh, I don't need to tell you this, 
benchmark uh, index uh, roughly looks at uh, lithium prices up 10x uh, since uh, the start of the decade. Um, what's uh, what's the outlook for lithium prices? It, it's it's hard not to be positive, um, and of course I would say that, but um, it, it's the birth of of an industry, and ultimately the demand set it's serving is growing massively. Um, you know we've seen the emergence of use cases for, for lithium exploding. Um, of course, most notably, it's the EV subset. Um, it's become very much a global growth story. Pre a couple of years back, it was very much China. It's now global. And I think um, EV penetration globally is only something like 10%. So it's got a long way to go. So when you start to, when you start to look at those long run projections around growth, a lot of lithium's required to serve that. And then when you look back and you go, well, where's the supply coming from? Um, a lot of supplies got to come online and what we know about lithium supplies it's very very hard uh, it doesn't matter whether you're doing a hard rock mine like our operation or brines they're technically very challenging they take a lot of time so we think Pilbara being one of the major suppliers globally we're in an incredible position to enjoy hopefully some really strong pricing for a long time to come I Talking to uh, some of the uh, near-term uh, producers uh, at this show, so uh, Sigma Lithium and uh, Lithium Americas, for instance, they reiterate the same thing that you say as well, too. This is extremely hard. There seems to be like a chemical industry component that's on the top of this as well. They also just talk about a rarity of talent, and, yeah. and it's always like trying to actually court this one person that knows this one thing or that does it get better? I mean, you see right now, there's all of these other lithium juniors that are coming up and then they have the projects that they have as well too, but is there gonna be more of a maturity in the industry or more of a capacity in the industry for this? Or is this just, it just is complex? Um, the, yeah, the problem you reference, it's a big problem. Um, being, given it's the birth of an industry, there is, there's just not a pool of know-how and talent. Um, it, it's very small. Um, in the case of Pilbara, a lot of the technical know-how and talent was homegrown. Uh, there was nowhere to, nowhere to import it from, so, um, and it was uh, a hard-earned um, skills in that regard. And those skills, it's a big part of our operating performance to date, and it's a big part of why we can ramp up fairly quickly. Uh, but for those emerging groups, the, the, the new developers, they're going to find it very, very difficult because um, yeah, there's not a pool of expertise to draw upon. Um, and that just adds to the already challenging job, which is marrying uh, natural variation of an ore body, whether it's brine or hard rock, to a, a bespoke processing plant. So um, it puts Pilbara in really good stead. Are you more of a mining industry, or I should say mining company, or more of a chemicals company? I think today we're very much a miner, but starting to do chemicals. Um, I think where we head over time is towards, well, effectively to become more of a chemicals company. And our aim is to be more sustainable um, chemicals company. Uh, talk about the lithium winter. So I remember following your company and other companies as well. And then that was in, uh, you know, the start of 2020 and uh, just having like a rough time of it, uh, just with lithium prices and just the way that the market was looking at it. We saw that turnaround uh, kind of uh, when COVID happened because there was all of this market support uh, that came out. But uh, maybe just talk a bit about that. You know, how meaningful was the government support that came in uh, for that? And did it really kind of move the lithium industry forward? Because there was a lot of other industries as well that got moved forward. So you get your Amazons and your cloud services because everybody started working from home for us. Yeah, no, it, um, it definitely helped move the industry forward um, you know pre pre-covid um, sort of particularly through the years of you know 2017 2018 uh, lithium consumption was effectively a china story it was all being consumed within china with china uh, having the strongest growth rates for uh, electric vehicles and there was some green shoots starting to show globally around the adoption of evs but it was by proportion very very small but um, post COVID and, and very much around the COVID response, uh, a lot of governments elected to, they wanted to stimulate their, their, their economies. And one of the things they chose to do was uh, really spark and support sort of the new world economies, one of which was EV subsidies. And that really supercharged uh, the uh, adoption. 
So we saw big subsidies deployed through Europe, uh, later, in the, later in North America. And then pound for pound, um, by mid-2020, um, what we were seeing is the same levels of lithium consumption between China and the rest and, and Europe. So that really supercharged it. So where we are today, it's very much moved from a China China demand to global demand, and and it's still taking off. So I think um, that EV adoption is set to continue to grow, um, and that that that's what's going to drive the lithium demand. You have uh, some oil and gas uh, sector experience uh, before you came into uh, the mining business. Uh, oil and gas has had some really fundamental changes uh, within their sector. So I think of like uh, offshore drilling, for example, or what we saw with fracking and it just changed the entire industry. It just changed the dynamics and it changed the suppliers. There seems to have not, there seems to have been a positive within the mining sector in terms of kind of that technology. And I don't know if that comes from the conservatism, if uh, that becomes from kind of lack of investment compared to what you actually see, which is happening in oil and gas. Um, or is it just that uh, we still, there's something that's pending that's out there that uh, still is actually going to be kind of making a really big difference. I guess the last thing that you could probably say was uh, the uh, processing techniques that really kind of um, uh, really propelled Nevada forward in terms of the gold miners. Yeah, yeah, there's, I think there, there's more innovation happening in mining. It's probably not, not that visible. Um, uh, you know, the, the pricing's extraordinary. Uh, for yeah. lithium and, and so I think uh, that's motivating uh, a lot of groups looking for assets and it's motivating groups looking at uh, different ways to to extract lithium um, and the case of that midstream project I mentioned um, that's a bit of an example of some quite novel new processing techniques so I think there's more to come um, but uh, one way or the other it's all it's all very complex and it's all going to take time because it doesn't matter which natural resource uh, you're extracting and concentrating your lithia from yeah, by proportion that there's still very low concentrations so um, I think I think more innovation more improvements will come but I don't see this sort of um, magic wand which completely transforms things overnight so to speak uh, last question Dale uh, fan of the inflation reduction act yes Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I think, um, uh, look, I think it's great that the Biden administration uh, ushered that in. It's, it's great for the industry. I think everyone's still working out um, how it's all going to play out, um, but I think it's really positive. Dale, thanks for your time. Thanks very much. My name is Michael McRae for Kitco Mining here at the BMO Mining Conference. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.